Thank you very much. And thank you for to the organizers for organizing this conference. I suppose I am the oldest person in the room. Uh, so I can I can look back a little bit. So uh, and in particular, I can go back to a conference, uh, not at ICTS, but uh, in a similar place, ICTP in Trieste. in 1997. So the, there was a, an event of, with a similar format, a summer school followed by a week of conference, a week of conference. And also I was asked uh, to give the first, the first lecture of the conference. Uh, and and uh, I think I can begin exactly in the same way than 26 years ago but then I will diverge widely. So, um, <clears throat> so just in very broad terms, suppose you have a curve X over Q. Uh, and the question of course is, is to determine its set of rational points. Uh, and the strategy is something like this, find, a strategy, a morphism over Q from X to an abelian variety and, and, and then you have to combine two things. Um, uh, a knowledge of the of the geometry of phi plus a control of a of q uh, so this is a sort of the general point uh, <clears throat> Uh, in the case of modular curves, so let's say that Q, Q is a prime. Uh, I might slip and, and call it capital N. So, so Q is equal to N. Uh, then consider the curve X, uh, X naught of Q. Of course, you can embed it into its Jacobian, J naught of Q. And then uh, you can go to a quotient. Uh, by a quotient, uh, I mean that I is an ideal of the Hecke algebra. P, which acts on the space of modular form of cusp forms of way two for gamma naught of Q. Okay, and, and so let's call this one J. And, and in that, that instance, you have a sort of an effective way of, of uh, controlling the rational point of, of, of J in the following sense. Uh, so, by control of A of Q, I mean something like finiteness or um, so J of Q is finite uh, if and only if the L function of J at one. Uh, is non-zero. This is, of course, modulo the Birch and Sullivan Dyer conjecture. But in that case, this is known. Um, and so, what is what is uh, what would be a proper ideal, ideal T uh, I? It would be something like that. I, and so, which is equivalent to, in fact, to I annihilates. Okay, this is equivalent modulo 
some unknown version of BSD, uh, the set of new forms in, in that space of modular forms such that F of L F1, uh, I want to annihilate those one, yes, non zero. Uh, uh, well, something like that is still a basic template for uh, rational points on, on, on modular curves. And, and uh, of course, uh, since 1997, much has been added. Uh, you have learned a lot about uh, uh, the extension of, I mean, this philosophy here was already the this philosophy of Shaboti, so to speak. And, and you have learned a lot about uh, uh, the Shaboti uh, Kim uh, extension of that. And, and it shall be noted also that Bilou and Parent have introduced uh, Runge's method, actually, to, to complete this picture. And, and uh, another notable thing is, is that they included all the works which has been done in transcendental number theory, starting from Master Wichtholz and uh, Pellerin and, uh, and Gaudron Raymond, and, and that has been incorporated into this, this picture. But what I want to talk about is I, 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 are, uh, arguments which are now are a little bit overlooked. which were discovered about 20 years ago. The first is the following one, fixed chi. Uh, a quadratic character. Uh, you have to impose that Q is uh, inert in K. And then uh, parent uh, use gross, use the formula of, of, of gross, uh, which can be stated uh, something like that. If you multiply the L function of F at one with the L function of F twisted by chi at one, you get a certain formula, which I'm not going to describe, times F, the Peterson scalar product of F. And, and from that formula, a parent uses to define I as let's let's call this formula star uh, define define I as the annihilator in T of uh, of the new forms such that the formula uh, the formula does not vanish. Of course, here you have two factors and not only one factor. And, and um, so, and, and actually, uh, the formula which expresses this, this is, is, is more involved actually than the formula which, involved, which express just the L value. Uh, but but uh, in fact, uh, the interest of using such a formula is that I will not explain is that the fact that the, the formula uh, between brackets here uh, tells us something about the geometry of the map from X naught of Q to RJ. And that was in characteristic Q. And that was exploited by Parent. Similarly, about uh, a little bit later, or about the same time, uh, Reboledo uh, considered uh, let's say fix H a new form and and she considers a triple L function uh, 
and the value at s equal to two. And, and similarly, there is a formula due to Ross and Kudla. Some formula. So here you have actually, uh, uh, well, essentially uh, an, uh, an algebraic number. And similarly here, an algebraic number. Times FF. Peterson scalar product times the square of the Peterson scalar product of H. And, and also, this factorizes into L of F1, L of F, A joint of H2. So, as you can see, L of F1 is also a factor of this triple function. And, and then uh, Reboledo does essentially the same thing than Farron. She defines I as the annihilator in T of the new forms such that a double star is non zero. And, and both of these results, first the one of Parent, were, uh, were used to make, uh, uh, to make a breakthrough uh, um, with respect to the rational point of uh, the modular curve X split plus of Q. Uh, so what is the lesson of this? The lesson of this, it might be worthwhile to go deeper into automorphic form. So, um, so I'm going to consider objects a little bit like this one, but without yet, at least, uh, but this was not my intention anyway, any Diofontaine um, consequence. Uh, so the situation I want to consider is the following. Now, fix G. A modular form of weight one for gamma one of n, m integer. So this is a new form. Uh, and consider the triple L function. And I consider here the conjugate of G, S at S equal one. So um, just like in the Reboledo situation, this can be factorized. Uh, okay, and and uh, yes, there is an understanding of the transcendental nature of this of this. Um, L value. So fix Q. Well, we have fixed Q already. So uh, so Q is still the same prime. And so write uh, G, the Q expansion of G. Of course, this is not the same Q. Uh, uh, 
and the Q bar is going to be an old form. Uh, then, if you try to compute L of P, P bar one, you get something pro proportional to certain formula times uh, the Peterson scalar product of F and G. Q bar, and you need to square this. Uh, I'm not completely sure who, who proved that. I probably it's a part of Ishino's formula, but this particular instance, I don't know. And set, and set BQM to be uh, to be what this product. Bar. And, and so which is a modular form for of weight two because both are of weight one for gamma one of m intersected for with gamma naught of q when we when did we did this trick here of course this this modular form gq bar is for gamma one of m intersected with gamma naught of q and and now gq is a trace down to gamma naught of Q of GQM. So, so it's a modular form of weight two. For uh, gamma naught of Q. Okay. And um, So I'm going to talk about um, Arish, uh, Aris Venkatesh conjecture, uh, which is a part of uh, a much larger world, the world of Venkatesh conjecture, which are extremely general. But perhaps the first interesting case is the case of this conjecture of Aris and Venkatesh. And, and uh, we had a working group in Paris on, on this uh, this year. And, and what I'm going to talk about uh, is joint work with Emmanuel Le Couturier. And also it's a work in progress. I mean, I'm going to show you that we have found so far, but uh, we expect more. Um, and so what are they about? Uh, just to give you already a hint, um, Harris and Venkatesh in some sense, look at, uh, at this triple L value when F is, uh, is congruent to an Eisenstein, uh, to the Eisenstein series in um, uh, weight two for gamma naught of Q. So this is this sort of ID. And, and, um, and well, this is one entry point and, 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 and you can reach from there another entry point, which is their conjecture is a sort of a Stark-like conjecture, but um, as we will see in finite, Characteristic. Right? I'm done with F now. Yes, all, all the theory of Mazur on the Eisenstein ideal was based on, on, on the existence of cusp forms which are congruent to the Eisenstein uh, to, um, to the Argentine series. And we will see indeed Mazur's work appear in this talk. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see. So, um, of course, there is a well known. 
correspondence that I'm going to recall between, on the one hand, uh, is it okay if I write here? Uh, the Galois representations. Mm -hmm. Factorize. EL of V, where, uh, which are two dimensional odd irreducible of conductor M and what else with coefficients. Yeah, we need space. No, that's okay. Uh, with coefficients in R from subring of the algebraic integers. That's one side, and the other side is um, uh, the model forms of weight one. S1 of M, a new form with coefficients in R. Uh, in one direction, so it's now a classical theorem. In one direction, this is due to the line and Serre. And in the other direction, um, <coughs> uh, there is a series of also so like and um, long lands. Channel. Uh, Buzzard and Taylor. And finally, the conjecture has been proved. I mean, the final, the final piece uh, is due, and, and the proof of the correspondence is due to Carré and Vinton Berger. Uh, what connects actually uh, the Galois representation to the modular form? Uh, simply the fact that a, a q a q is the trace uh, of rho of a Frobenius q for every prime q uh, for q not dividing m. Um, So if you are not familiar with this, you can keep in mind an example. Where L is a splitting field. Of. X3 X3 uh, minus X minus one. And G. And so the Galois group is S3 that you can embed into GL2 of uh, C if you like. The ring of coefficients is, is Z. And the corresponding modular form G is the product of one minus QN, one minus Q. 23n, and uh, I can specify what is capital M. Capital M is 23. So you have sort of a Ramanujan type uh, modular form here. Um, but uh, another entry point in the to the conjecture of 
Harris and Venkatesh is to say that actually Rho and F share more than uh, simply uh, the identity I've written on the last board. So, so the, the, there will be two sides in that um, conjecture. There is uh, what you can call, if you like, uh, the Galois side. And on the other hand, you have the modular side. So on each side, you can define a certain invariant. Um, so now there is a Ben Katesh. Define two collections, a collection of elements of uh, elements in. Uh, in what? In FQ star. Answer R. So when I say a collection, what varies here is the prime number Q. Um, on each side. Uh, a piece of notation. Uh, if you take an element in this tensor product, it will be denoted by A to the R since, since FQ star is a multiplicative group. Uh, in uh, FQ star. Okay, so let's let, let's look first at the Galois side. Um, one one shall not well. I, I will look not quite at V, but at the adjoint representation. The Galois group acts by conjugacy. And inside this representation, you have the part of trace zero. And, and uh, the fundamental object that Harris and Venkatesh uh, consider now uh, is the, the R module of endomorphism from the adjoint representation toward OL star. So OL star is a group of units. And I have forgotten something. The, the, the morphism have to be have to be compatible with the action of G, where G is the Galois group of L over Q. And actually, ha, uh, ha, um, Michael Harris has a, a notation for this uh, uh, for this object. Uh, he denoted it by. At least when Venkatesh is not around, he, he, he denotes it by va, uh, which is a Sanskrit letter. Uh, many of you know. So this is Aris notation. Okay, so um, uh, this is, a, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot something. 
Um, so this is a, an R module, as I said already, and it's an R module of rank one. Uh, well, this is, in fact, an exercise to, to prove this. It's based simply on the unit theorem. Um, and, and also, you have uh, to use, in an essential way, uh, the fact that rho is odd. So, with these two things. Odd meaning that the determinant of rho um, acting on the complex conjugation is minus one. All right. Sorry? Yes? This is the same alias in, in, in the example. Um, okay, so now consider phi in this bar um, and, and Q0. So phi is sort of well defined up to a scalar. Uh, Q0 a prime of uh, L above. Uh, so you have, of course, a Frobenius at Q0, which belongs to the decomposition group. And uh, you can do the following thing. So you, you could consider the image by rho of the Frobenius at Q0. Uh, this belongs actually to the adjoint of V, but the problem is that it's not does not have trace zero, but there is a way to, to correct that. You simply project on the trace zero part. So you multiply by two here. And here you, uh, you remove uh, the trace of rho of Q0 uh, times the matrix identity. So indeed, this belongs to the adjoint representation. Uh, so now you can apply, you can apply phi. So you get something uh, which belongs to, um, let me see, which belongs to OL star R. And you can apply further, you can reduce here modulo Q0. And, and the point is that uh, actually, since phi is compatible to the, uh, with the action of the Galois group, it's compatible with the action of the decomposition group, which is a subgroup. And, 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 and if you look at that, but you see immediately that actually the element you get here belongs to FQ star. And let's call it RQ of phi. Uh, so the letter R is for regulator. Okay, so now we have a collection of elements in, in FQ star tensor R, and I have nothing more to say on the Galois side. Uh, we, now it's time to, to come to the the automorphic side.
I believe I started at 55 or even, I don't know, even 110, yeah. No, Q uh, should be should be actually shall not define 23. It's any prime, but not 23. So Q should not divide M. No, the point is that you have infinitely many elements. One essentially one for every prime. Okay, so the modular side. Okay. Um, so recall that we have defined uh, G and GQ bar and uh, capital GQ. And it's good that you, are, you had actually a course on uh, Mazur's Eisenstein ideal theory, because I'm going to use that now. Uh, there exists SQ from the space of modular form of weight two or gamma naught of Q. Uh, I, I must say with integral coefficients. Uh, it is with value in not quite in FQ star, but uh, FQ star modulo U12, the 12th root of unit. Uh, well, this has to do with the Shimura subgroup, which has been computed uh, by, by Mazur as part of the Eisenstein ideal theory. But I can tell you actually how you can uh, obtain this map. So consider so as follows. Uh, consider the space of weight two, modular, oh, I'm sorry, M is two, but M2. So M2 is a space of holomorphic modular forms, not necessarily cuspidal. And um, Consider the space for gamma one of m, and then you have the space for uh, gamma naught of gamma naught of q. You have an action here of f q star modulo plus or minus one by the diamond operators, and, and this map is actually surjective. Uh, inside here. You have the space of this form, which, uh, oh, yeah, this map is, of course, the trace. And, and similarly, you have the trace, which goes into uh, S2 of gamma naught of Q. And, and this map is not so. Well, so then what you can do is you take a uh, um, modular form G here. C. Yes, okay, G uh, has a, not necessarily an antecedent here, but it has an antecedent in, in the space of, uh, in the full space of holomorphic mod modular forms. So, and uh, it's equal to trace of G1 with G1 in M2. And, uh, and let's call uh, A note of G1 the constant coefficient. Then SQ of G 
is uh, the product for T in FQ star mod plus or minus one uh, of T to the power A naught of T acting of G1. So recall that there is an action of, of the diamond operator. So you can look, you can make the diamond operator act on G1 and take the relevant uh, the relevant constant coefficient. So you get an element a priori in FQ star modulo plus or minus one, but uh, there is a little glitch in the theory. So in fact, you have to go out by the 12th root of unity. And of course, uh, the G that I'm considering here is a, is a GQ that I have defined uh, that I have defined before. And so the, the conjecture reads as follows. Yes, it's, it's defined by, it's defined on modular form with the integral coefficients here. Uh, of course, then you can extend scalars and, and so with 2R for instance, and you get an element in it to start on. Actually, this construction is not in Aris Venkatesh. You do something much more complicated, but it's in fact it's pretty good. Uh, what do they conjecture? So this is a conjecture. Yeah. That there exists. Let's say lambda in R, such that uh, RQ of phi is equal to SQ of GQ to the power, I mean, this is a tensor product with my notation. So, so this is um, for every Q. Okay, so, uh, so lambda does not depend on Q. Uh, so you might ask, uh, uh, what about the 12th root of unity? It doesn't matter, in fact, because um, uh, you replace phi by 12 times phi, and you get. Uh, uh, obviously, on one side you have something. Uh, on the right side, you have something which is completely canonical, but on the left and right side, it's something which is defined only up to a scalar. So a possible improvement on the conjecture would be actually a real equality. One could imagine that. Uh, so before I go to new stuff, some results and remarks. What is known? Uh, Aris and Venkatesh show something like, um, if SQ is equal to zero, then RQ is equal to zero. Depends on deformations here. Uh, there are substantial results when rho is dihedral. Uh, dihedral means that the projective image of rho is isomorphic uh, to uh, to a dihedral group, and, and there is a set of four or authors, so Harris, Zarmon, Roger, and Van Gatesh, and they show that the conjecture is uh, true, with some restrictions that I'm not going to describe. Uh, 
Uh, actually, there is a second, uh, another proof due to, to Le Couturier, still in the dihedral case. Different proof and different restrictions. And, and um, uh, Zhang, uh, Robin Zhang, a student of Michael Harris, has proved the, uh, has expanded. So he removes some restrictions. And also, he is, in a sense, generalized the conjecture, uh, uh, gave a nice shape to the conjecture. Maybe I'll have time to, to speak about this. Uh, I, have, I have a sort of a long series of remarks. Uh, maybe I will not state them all. Well, you might you might ask why why wait one. Uh, okay, so you have to go to the general framework of of Venkatesh. Let's say simply that if you look at the coherent cohomology of uh, the modular curve x one of m, and you take here the usual shift corresponding to case forms of weight one, then, uh, then, and if you look at the action break operators uh, on, on this cohomology group, the same eigenvalues appear for for i equals zero and i equal one. So there is a, a phenomenon of multiplicity of, of vectors distributed to in different degrees in, in, in cohomology. And, and uh, in that case, uh, the general conjecture predict that uh, the, in that case, that the, the group, uh, the, the R module VA is going to be of rank one. Uh, so, and equivalently, if you know the theory, um, the, the adjoint L function S at S equal one has a, has a, uh, a trivial zero. Not a trivial zero, has a zero. Uh, which is uh, not true if you replace G by a modular form of weight greater than one. And, and actually the value here is proportional to the Peterson scalar product of G. And also uh, the conjecture of Stark predict that, uh, that this is a regulator of a Stark unit. And, um, and, and Jean has an analogy. Uh, what I have defined as SQ. Uh, yes, SQ of GQ is the Peterson scalar product of G. a sort of uh, an analog of the Peterson scalar product in uh, the field FQ star. But this belongs, of course, to FQ star tensor R. Um, and, and, and in that way, you can, you can integrate um, uh, um, the conjecture of Harris and Mengatesh with the classical conjecture of Stark. So as you can see, and, and it shows that in the dihedral case, his more general conjecture is, uh, uh, is satisfied for many dihedral, uh, in many dihedral situa uh, uh, situations. Okay, so you can see that there is, there is a number of perspectives on this conjecture. And, and now I'm going to introduce still another perspective. Uh, which is sort of new.
which give you a way of uh, understanding and computing what is SQ of GQ. And this is based on the theory of Borisov and Gunnels. Uh, I believe are there two L's or one L, I'm not sure. No, one L. Okay, so I'm going to write a diagram. Um, uh, here you have Uh, this coset, of course, is finite. So this is nothing else than Z bracket FQ star, uh, I'm sorry, FQ square minus zero, zero, modulo plus or minus one by the map which to a matrix A, B, C, D associates uh, the class of CD mod, mod Q. Okay. Uh, you can go from that to a relative homology group of the modular curve X naught of Q by the map which to uh, G equal to A, B, C, D associates the modular symbol G zero, G infinity. So this is a class of the path from G0 to G infinity in the upper half plane. So a path which go from a cusp to a cusp. And, and uh, you can send it uh, into uh, that group. It defines a, a well-defined relative homology class. Inside here, you've got H1, so the absolute homology group. Which itself, is a quotient of the homology of the homology of, of the, the affine modular curve that is the curve deprived of its cusp. Okay, so uh, now um, on this, you have the Borisov Gunnels map, which lands into. M2 of Kama 1 of Q modulo the Eisenstein series. And uh, how is it given? First, you take an element here and you lift it, you lift it to an element in the uh, relative multigroup X. And what do you do? Uh, you consider the following. Q expansion. There is a constant term plus sum from n equal one to infinity of Tn. Tn is the nth Hecke operator times x. You consider the intersection product with a modular symbol zero infinity due to the n. Uh, so this is the intersection product. Okay. Um, so here is the construction. Um, and what do, uh, yeah, okay. So I have to make something clear. So you take an element here, you lift it here. So, but there is an ambiguity. But the, the ambiguity is, 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 is in fact, um, is in, disappears once you mod out by Eisenstein series. This is the reason why you mod out. Okay. 
Okay, so what do Borisov and Gunnell say? Uh, first, uh, the image. So it's, it's a deeply arithmetic theorem in the following sense. The image of uh, BG uh, is found by by the modular forms F, new form, in, in, in S2 of gamma one of Q, such that the L function does not vanish. That's one thing. So now you might recall that, uh, that uh, the modular form G, G, I mean, I didn't say it explicitly, in fact, but we will see it. Uh, G actually belongs to that space. Uh, and the second thing uh, is an explicit formula. So uh, let's return to the diagram. Uh, you've got an element here. So it's embedded here. And what I have not said is that this map is surjective and I call it Xi1. So this is Manin's map, which is well known to people who do modular symbols. And, and so, you, so any element here can be expressed as, uh, um, as uh, an image of, of something by Xi, so Xi1. F U star square modulo plus or minus one. Okay, so uh, so I want to know what is the image of something like that, and and, and the formula is the following. Lambda UV EU EV. So what are EU and EV? EU is an Eisenstein series of weight one whose constant term is P1 bar of Q over Q plus Q expression. series wait one uh, well, yes uh, b1 bar this is the first Bernoulli polynomial in the periodic And while I'm at it, P, B2 bar is simply X square minus X plus one six. Uh, and, and for W in uh, FQ star modulo plus or minus one, you have FW, which is um, one fourth of W over Q plus Q expansion. Uh, this is a modular form of weight two. Okay, my time is almost up, so I need to state the theorem now. So it's about the calculation of, of SQ of GQ. So write GQ as oops, 
EU EVs. Uh, recall that there is an ambiguity up to Eisenstein series, so I need to, to add perhaps uh, Eisenstein series of, um, of um, weight two. W and W. So this is still UV in FQ star square minus zero zero modulo plus or minus one. And this is also in FQ star. Uh, FQ star modulo, uh, there is no minus zero zero. So this is FQ star square. And this is modulo plus or minus one. Okay, so um, uh, I'm, I'm going to do away with. Uh, the prime two and three. Then uh, SQ of GQ is given by the following formula. P. Oh. Uh, Lambda UV, B1 bar of UT over Q, B1 bar of VT over Q. And there is an, an additional factor, which is product. So this is in T in FQ star modulo plus or minus one. Uh, T in FQ star modulo plus or minus one of T to the power of one force, uh, B2 of P over N. So this is going to be in FQ star uh, cross. Well, you, you remove the prime two and three because they are troubles. Okay, so this is a formula, uh, the expression for SQ of GQ, which we think will, will be useful. Uh, note that this expression uh, has been already uh, encountered in the literature. Uh, I forgot something. I forgot, um, yeah, I forgot an exponent. From our W of mu of W. Okay, so this expression between brackets is the analog of um, in FQ star of zeta prime of minus one. So something which I've already encountered. Okay, so this is a formula and um, I think I'm going to, to stop here without making further remarks. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes. Thank you, Professor uh, Alkmarel for your uh wonderful uh, talk are there any questions or comments please feel free to ask uh, well maybe it's the obvious question after this but so if i understand this is sort of the explicit version of one side of the conjecture in this context yes so i guess you hope to also uh, compute the or oh, <laughs> formula for the other one right yeah yeah we, we we hope to understand better the other side as well so Uh -huh. Actually, those conjectures raise so many questions. So it... Okay. Uh, are there any more questions? If not, uh, please thank the speaker for his wonderful talk. Thank you. Sir.